Okay. So, uh, hey everyone. For those that uh, don't know me um, already, or even those that do, because you have to listen anyway. Um, my name is Becca, Becca Little. Uh, not like the shop, uh, Little, like, you know, on the slide. It's crazy how many people confuse that. Um, but yeah, I'm a student in my final year of studies uh, at the University of Glasgow doing computing science. Uh, so basically, right now I'm just procrastinating because my dissertation is due on Wednesday. But uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, anyway, this talk's a bit of a different one. Um, asking the questions, why are users uh, star, star, star uh, at security? Also known as, why are users shit at security? Um, so this question's been asked about a million times, uh, but I'm going to look at the actual reasoning behind it and like sort of why they are shit uh, instead of just you know asking no one by just shouting it like into the void uh, when I'm pissed off. Uh, before we get started, a uh, quick disclaimer to say that although I study at the University of Glasgow, none of this presentation is endorsed by um, or part of their work. It's all stuff I'm doing individually. Um, it will almost definitely remain that way. Um, <laughs> That's uh, that's fine. Um, also, as you can tell, um, I'm going to be swearing a wee bit in this, so uh, yeah, sorry if you're offended by that. Um, I'll be offended if you're offended, so let's just not be offended together. Yeah, cool. Um, also, a lot of the stuff I'm going to say here is opinion, a lot of it's fact. Um, I'll try and make it obvious when something is actually a fact, but um, overall, just take everything I say as me spouting shite. Um, <laughs> so yeah... Uh, Let's just get started anyway. So let's just start by some uh, common reasons why people think that users are shit. Um, naturally, I bet like half a year sitting going, come on, she needs to mention this, she needs to mention this thing. Um, I don't blame you because we do have a lot of reasons why we think this. So first we have a fairly obvious one, uh, passwords. Like, yeah, I have to, I have to talk about this because it's just, you know, it's bad. Uh, don't get me wrong, a lot of users are... Uh, really good at making passwords, uh, you know, long, complex passwords, lots of weird-ass symbols, uh, variations of caps, lowercase characters, and all of that. Um, but that does depend on uh, what you would define a lot as. Um, a lot of users could mean a 100 to you. You know, that may be a lot of people. Um, but overall, um, to be frank, they're absolutely shit at passwords. Like, there's no other way to put it. Like, who the fuck told users that it was a great idea to base all of their passwords, their most important shit, on uh, the hometown that they were born in, with their, their uh, date of birth, or just their year of birth, even. Um, or, like, their first pet, who they upload photos of on Instagram every day, with their name, all the information about the meat you need to get in the password. Um, and why so many parents set up their kids' um, first accounts with these, with these things, like... Because overall, you're just setting your kid up to be bullied later if their if their passwords get leaked. You know, you don't want your kid to have to grow up with all of their messages to their best friend when they were 12 years old being public uh, publicly available on the internet. It's just as bad as when people name their kids Iona when their last name's Frisbee. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, users tend to be fucking useless at this. I mean, let's just take a quick reminder and look at the most common passwords to try to attain. I'm sure a lot of you have already. Uh, this is just a quick refresher. If you've seen it the past, like, 12 years, it's exactly the fucking same. Nobody learns shit. Um, even when people have had passwords on the most common password list for years running, they're still using the same ones. And at least they do have the argument that they're not going to forget it, because all they need to do is Google most common passwords and bam, it's right there. Um... But still, you would think, you know, you'd especially number one, like taking the piss. Like. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's just one reason. Uh, next, we have uh, privacy settings. Oh yeah, so you know that some people actually don't know these things exist. Like, I shit you not. Uh, the other day, someone genuinely said to me, "How come I can't see your friends list on Facebook, even though I am in fact friends with you?" Oh, re you can change that, really? I was like, yeah, you you can. If you actually looked at your settings, like ever, just to glance, like, um, privacy settings really aren't helped by some people around my age. Um, a lot of older people do it as well, but it's more popular now. Um, being so obsessed with getting the most likes or the most retweets or the most shares of uh, posts, so they just point blank refuse to put um to make the things private because otherwise people can't retweet their tweets. Um, 
And if that's what's most important to someone compared to, you know, actually having uh, privacy, then, you know, if they're really wanting that, that Instagram fame and that famous lifestyle, then people could potentially just get your address um, and turn up at your house and then you'd have like that crazed soccer fan spin going on. So if that's what you want, that's fine. Um, yeah, there are lots of articles being published that I've seen really recently. They've always kind of been, been published, but um, specifically surrounding Facebook, Google and Instagram. Uh, like this article published last week by Consumer Reports, uh, which is about how to use Facebook privacy settings. Uh, like I said, they've also got similar ones published around the same time, um, about Google and Instagram. Articles like this are genuinely written with the aim of just trying to help people um, and walk them through how to change their privacy settings to make things a little more secure. But let's be honest, some users won't even see them. And then when people do see them, they'll just be like, oh, that's, I don't need to do that. Well, that's fine. So this leads me on to my next point, where we have the I have nothing to hide anyway users. Uh, the get suspicious um, whenever your account's on private and automatically think you're uh, a drug dealer or um, wor a lot worse, that was just the safest thing I could say. <laughs> um, <laughs> with a dark and hidden secret. Um, so, for example, I recreated my Facebook account about a year or two ago, just before GDPR kicked in. Um, obviously, this was just the start of Facebook's uh, issues with privacy, but, um, well, that's debatable. Um, but, yeah, so when your Facebook data, um, when you deleted something from Facebook, they still kept it, because why wouldn't they, um, if anyone remembers that? So the amount of people that messaged me after GDPR hit and I recreated my Facebook, um, you know, I was getting phone calls asking if I'd been hacked, you know, if someone was trying to impersonate me, and I was like, no, it's just me making a new Facebook. It's nothing... Um, and they thought it was so weird that I made a new one, um, especially my family, who were just like, what were you saying when you were like 12 that was so bad that you didn't want a private company to have it? It's like, well, I just wanted some privacy. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you should want some as well. I mean, even though people say that they have nothing to hide all the time, they complain so much about, um, say, if the FBI came to them and you know, wanted to go on their devices. And they say that they won't unlock their phone for anyone. But I can assure these people that if everything they had ever received or ever sent or um, anything at all from all their technical devices was just published online, uh, they would quickly regret it. So yeah, that's the most infuriating, re infuriating reasons that I personally have for thinking users are shit as curry. There are, of course, hundreds more. Um, thousands even that people could think up and I'm sure that your own personal lists would be very different from mine So, um, but moving on we actually have reasons why users think we're shit um, <coughs> as, rich, as rich as it is um, users think we're shit sometimes at security too it's kind of ironic um, but you know it's, it's good to get um, feedback and so on and crit criticisms so for the record this is just looking at we um, as like security analysts, experts, enthusiasts, whatever you want to call us. Whenever I reference we, it's like community, I guess. Um, so yeah, here we go. So firstly, we have uh, this mistrust that seems to be baked into us and ingrained in everything that we do. I'm um, sure that sometimes it's a good thing and it's no wonder. Like, obviously, we know how easy it is, um, as you've seen in Stu's keynote this morning, like to get people to hand over their details and so on. Um, it means that we won't fall for phishing emails where HMRC are trying to give you money. Um, like, be realistic. If you ever are, you know, owed money from HMRC, they're going to avoid trying to contact you. <laughs> um, but anyway, so it does get pretty irritating for the average user uh, sometimes. Example, something that um, I actually done myself um, when I kind of had this big security kick and realized security was important. Um, was I got a new phone and I made my network settings and configurations uh, of the network driver on my new phone so tightly configured that I could only connect to one Wi-Fi network, being Edgerow. Uh, if, if anyone's a student or if anyone is in academia and had to use Edgerow before, I'm sorry, because um, it's painful, especially like at peak times. So um, I had to download, uh, I think it was like a 100 megabyte file to kind of fix this and it took me three hours because it's edge room, it's, uh, it's bad. So when, you know, I told people about this, they were just kind of laughing at me and being like, 
come on. Which, mm. yeah, it's kind of funny. I'm kind of stupid, but... Um, another example is I have um, a friend that tries to be, like, as off the grid as possible at all time for security purposes, because, you know, it's fair enough. Fair point. But when you try and reach them, the quickest way to get a response is email. And uh, because they try to avoid taking their phone with them wherever they go, and because they try to avoid taking it with them wherever they go, they don't really use it. Um, so it can be quite um, quite irritating. Obviously, they have no social network uh, profiles or no instant messaging service either, like WhatsApp or Telegram or anything like that, because, uh, you know, all the organizations are spying on us after all. So uh. <laughs> Then we have the uh, constant secrecy. Um, again, this can mostly be a good thing. You know, it, genuinely, um, it's good to not publish everything about yourself online sometimes for obvious reasons. Um, but it can get in the way. For example, now bear in mind I made the next example um, when I was very sleep deprived. Just, uh, just like that so, <laughs> if you were to message someone asking for um, their address, let's go to your, you know, your mate's got a gaff, you want to go to it, it's fine. Um, and they said that instead of just sending you a message um, with their address, then they would send stupid carrier pigeon that they have for you that would meet them by the third tree in the park of the place that you live in um, within 10 minutes to give them it because you don't trust the communication channel that you're messaging on. It's a bit ridiculous. Obviously, this is a bit of um, a far-fetched example, but honestly, it wouldn't even surprise me that much anymore Um, (laughs) because, yeah, it's the length some people go to to protect their personal information. Um, It's fair, but be realistic. Um, oh yeah, on a, on a side note as well, you can really tell the images I made compared to the ones I got online. It's uh, probably not for the best, but that's fine. Um, then there's this like hacker man attitude. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots of people that are good at technical security and pen testing and so on. Um, even if they're not, to be honest, they still do it. Um, constantly hold it over people's heads. And it's not just security enthusiasts that are guilty of this. Um, I bet there's a ton of people in their lifetime that have probably been told by someone that does some kind of martial arts that they could batter you if they really wanted to. So you should watch yourself. It's like, oh, all right. Jeez, all right. That's fine. <laughs> uh, hard man. But obviously, there's just really no point to it, especially when the situation just doesn't call for it. Um, it's, you know, obviously, it can be a laugh and a joke, but um, please stop saying you can hack people just because, just because it's funny. Um, especially not if they just beat you at a game in COD. Um, even if you are one of the few people that make that claim that can actually hack someone, as beautifully illustrated by this meme, that's not the point. And um, the point is, it makes us look kind of shitty when we do it. So moving on, are the constant assumptions that we make that users are stupid and we're so much better than them. I mean, sometimes it's justified, um, but most of the time it's just pretty irritating for users. Especially if this is done when a user is asking you specifically for help or advice with something. Explaining something to someone like they're five years old isn't going to make them feel good about the answer you just gave them. It's just going to make them feel stupid and small. It's important to sometimes remember that everyone needs to learn. And if someone's coming to you for advice or asking you about security setting or something like that, uh, don't be a dick about it because they genuinely are trying to draw something from you. It's its a compliment, really. Um, it will probably just make them regress further into the realm of uh, no security if you do make them feel bad about it as well, because uh, they'll just probably think they can do it themselves. and They can sometimes, but sometimes, sometimes maybe not. So those are the top reasons from both my personal opinion and uh, some people I actually kind of informally surveyed um, about the way that they've seen security people interact with them and with each other. Um, So again, there are tons more things that users could add to this list about how shit we are. I'm sure they would be more than happy to, but uh, not letting them get any more space. So, Uh, In reality, we're both not completely wrong. Um, We can both be shit. Um, Users can be shit a lot. Uh, We can be shit a lot. And we can both be great sometimes too. Um, However, there are some important suggestions that I want to make um, as you know, so that we as security folk and uh, users as non-security folk can help each other out and just be less shit overall. Um, so firstly, we have the need-to-know principle. Um, 
This is uh, pointed out by uh, D.B. Parker, um, and it's adapted from a military uh, assumption that was made, um, done by a range of psychology studies. Um, and it's basically summed up by the more that we know about a security mechanism, um, the easier it is to attack. Um, which isn't, isn't wrong um, as such, but they're flipping that round, sort of, so that um, the less that users know about something, then the secure, the, the more secure it is for them, because, um, you know, people just think of them as an inherently insecure, uh, which isn't entirely true. Um, there have actually been studies done on this, um, which I can provide links to um, down there. Um, that show that when users don't know about things like password procedures and how easily their passwords are broken and how insecure they are and you know how quickly you can brute force it in a matter of seconds, um, their security is much weaker than when they do. So as a result, we can see that the opposite of what kind of a lot of companies and a lot of people are currently doing um, is actually what should be done. The more that users are told about risks, their security and how easy it is to break, the better they are at actually implementing security settings well. Um, we can ha we can actually help them with this as well by just telling them in a nice way that they're bad at security, um, you know, and why security should be important to them uh, depending on circumstances. So, for example, even if you can't get people to change their mind about implementing stronger passwords, at least let them know about sites like how secure is my password, um, which is Dashlane site. And have I been pwned so that they can at least get some indication of if they're doing a good job with their passwords or not? Obviously, make sure that, um, you know, these sites are the actual correct URLs they're going to instead of just being fished um, in an attempt to better their security as well. Um, if they're actually keen on listening to you um, more, maybe recommend them to just install password managers and let them know that they never have to forget another password again. That's absolutely amazing. So, all this boils down to the notion of perceived threats. So in any situation, not just in security, um, you're more likely to be more careless and do your regular thing if you don't think there's any threats involved with what you're doing. For example, if you found out the person sitting next to you right now was trying to um, plot to steal your phone uh, during this uh, me giving this talk, um, you might hold it a little bit more closely to you. <laughs> Um, or you might just shift further away from them, or you might just be more aware of their presence, like you probably are right now, because I just mentioned it. Uh, so, yeah. Um, if users don't think that something's a security threat, um, or something that can be exploited um, against them, then they're probably not going to do anything to make it more secure, because um, that just takes more effort from them, right? I'm not, like I said, I'm not just talking about technical security. Um, if some people saw how easily that some of the people in this room could probably pick the lock to their front door, then they'd probably run out and get like a new door and 25 different alarm systems and so on as well. This leads on to the importance of communication and transparency between users and uh, security folk like us. If we want users to stop causing us so much grief, and if users want to stop causing, if users want us to stop causing them so much grief, then we should really just talk to each other about security more openly. You can go out and tell someone that you could probably guess their password within five minutes, or five tries even. Um, and it's not always a bad thing. Um, just kind of gauge the situation though. You know, you don't want to be doing that, you know, if someone's just had a really hard day. Um, maybe a bit annoying. Um, or you can go out and ask someone the security question uh, to their online banking account and see how quickly they tell you the right answer so that you can just be like, all right, well now I could, you know, get all your bank details. Thanks. Um, and then run off before they got you. So. Um, but make users around you aware that it's okay for them to ask questions about security. Um, it may actually lead to them thinking more about it uh, and thinking better about us as a community. A lot of you may be sitting there thinking, well, why should it be my job to go out and tell users that they should be more secure? It's just no fun. I don't want to be that person. I want to see them suffer. And to that, I say, if you understood the irritation that I had and the reason that uh, this users are shit at security part of this talk, and you don't want to do something about it, then um, you probably just want to watch the world burn. And uh, thanks. <laughs> Each their own. Uh, so lastly, some takeaways. We're all shit at some aspects of security, as are users, some more than others. Um, but we should try and speak to them about their security without making them feel small, or that they can't come to us for advice when they need it. It's important that, you know, you, if we want to make the most common password list for next year, 
a little bit um, less similar as it has been previously, then we all need to take a part to play in it. Secondly, don't ask people to go meet your carrier pigeons in the park um, instead of just messaging them. Uh, sometimes we need to apply, um, we, we don't need to apply the same level of security to everything that we do um, because, you know, it's situational. Um, it's okay that, you know, sometimes you text message asking what time dinner is, is going to be read by someone, that's fine. It's not too bad. So thank you all very much for coming along and listening. Really appreciate it. Um, I think I've got time for some questions as well. Thanks. <laughs> Question? Yep. What do you think of the people who I think are really shit, which are the software engineers that build the shitty systems that the actual <laughs> users have to use? Um, I think that an effort should be made. I mean, I'm from a software engineering like background. If <laughs> that's it's fine. No, my uni, my uni like specializes in software engineering. Um, basically, I think it's just bad. It's baked in from the start. Like we, for instance, we have to do one security course. It's compulsory, and that's it. And it's just like this is encryption. <laughs> and I'm like, and you're going to send these people out, and they're going to be fully fleshed software engineers, like you're having a laugh. Um, uh, so yeah, they should be taught more about security. It shouldn't just be up to security people to go and fix their mistakes, especially when the software engineering team is like twenty times the size of the security team. Um, something that is hopefully going to be changed. Um, there is becoming more of an emphasis on security. Companies are doubling the sizes of their security teams. Which I kept keep getting told at graduate events. So um, <laughs> we're tripling our security. I'm like, great, cool, thanks. Um, but yeah, yep. Do you think we'll still have all these problems in like thirty years when all like old people die? It's just us <laughs> young people that grew up with this stuff. Um, <laughs> hopefully not. But like I said, there's like influencers and stuff on Instagram and like fitness models and stuff that are just like I'm not going to make anything private because people aren't going to see my posts. And that's becoming much more of a push in this generation. Um, a lot more people do that uh, and try and make money off of it and monetize. And so I think some, I would like to say people are going to be more aware of it. But whether people are going to care about it. Uh, I guess we uh, can have a part to play in this, like I was, I was saying as well. Yeah, you had a question as well. I was going to do another what about, I'm sure you've heard what about. What about people who run set and industry events and they decide to do real money? Well, <laughs> um, I get, yeah, it's, it's yeah. the same thing. Like, sometimes people. Um, don't think about things like this. Some people, sometimes people have the view that I have that like well, sometimes. People who run conferences who work in don't think about it. What the hell do we have? <laughs> <laughs> but there's also good reasons to take people's real identities when you're at an event where people get harassed and so on. Well, you're not checking identity. You're not checking the personal source. What you do is checking the name and the email address. Look at my card. It's blank. Personally, I would say that um, it would be better if people, you know, the event organizers took your real names and stuff and then um, give you the option of, you know, what you want displayed on your card. I think that's the best way to do it. Just say it, and be science, uh, Scotland, you don't care if your real name or your fake name. I love you. <laughs> you know, we're at a conference right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I've written this bit. <laughs> Any other questions? Feel free. What are the things that you would want users to know if you could just like get hold of them and say, "Do this"? What, like you mean by like, grabbing them and shaking them? Yeah. yeah. Um, like that privacy settings exist, I suppose, and that their passwords are probably already online, and changing one digit or making it the next year along um, isn't going to make it more secure. So, so many people have that misconception. Um, yeah, and just really how, you know, it, they can. there's probably a map somewhere um, online, even if it's private to them, um, of like everywhere they've been at some point, like what Google does, where it tracks you, like in the background. It's, uh, people don't know that unless they like look into it a lot of the time. So maybe just kind of making them more aware of stuff like that. So. Say you had that conversation and you say, yeah, you know, security privacy settings exist. Mm -hmm. 
how would you advise somebody to decide on what's private and not? Say there's not an influencer, mm. not a super private person who doesn't yep. say anything. How do they make the decision of what to do and not to do? What would they go through? I would say just think of everything as like if you're, for instance, if I just like shouted out information to everyone in this room or like just put it up online, what would you want people to know and what things would you kind of be like, ah, I don't really want people to know that. Um, kind of decide based on that what you don't have to make as secure as. And then if it's a site-wide thing, um, like for example, people want private messages to remain private, um, but some information they don't really care about, um, just sort of implement as much security as you see fit um, and then obviously hopefully that will lead to them asking you what you see fit I'll play with passwords mine's going to be an issue um, what would you say is good length and is something too long and safe um, it's a bit of a didn't expect that question today uh, <laughs> But um, no, I would say that um, I would say that. What do you mean by unsafe? If something, if something is, if well, passwords way too long. Three characters for a password is yeah. Well, perfect, especially in this industry. But um, what would you say is like good length and password? I would say that it depends on what you're putting in your password. Um, for instance, like you've got that website that I had up. Um. Like, is my password safe or something? It tells you how many years it would take to crack your password, how many minutes even, sometimes. Um, and based on that, um, you can, you know, obviously if you're using words from the dictionary and stuff, it, like, puts it down. Um, whereas if you're using random characters and stuff, it puts it up. Um, you could have a way shorter character with symbols and um, a ton of stuff like that, and it would be more secure than a really, really long password that's just, like, the first line of a song. So, it depends. Uh, length isn't everything. So you use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you the users uh, have a lack of knowledge and security. Mm -hmm. Do you think that actually, because in our days everyone has a mobile phone, kids in our days they have a mobile phone, sh should we actually promote awareness already in school? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that, you know, the the earlier that people have these devices, I think you should be teaching it from then. Um, it's like it's like the previous comment, like you can't just train someone how to be a software engineer and not make them learn security from the start. Like it doesn't work like that, because um, otherwise they're still going to be in that software engineer mindset and security is going to be an afterthought. Where security should like sort of come as a thought with these devices. It should be like, oh, okay, um, first thing I do, what's my password going to be? Okay, well, how secure do I need to make this password? So, so. Uh, just one more question, yeah. Um, with two-factor authentication uh, becoming more prominent, mm -hmm. um, maybe more for us instead of general users, do you think that eventually uh, bad passwords will be a much smaller problem than it is today? It depends on how the two-factor authentication has been done. For example, um, Google has like their thing where you just kind of unlock your phone and click yes and then match number on screen. But if you don't have your phone or if you're logging in from a different browser or something or your security settings are quite tight, which I assume most people in this room will have them, um, it often doesn't let you do that and it has to input your password. So if passwords are still an option as a sort of authentication mechanism, then they still need to be just as secure, I would say. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming along. Thanks for your great questions.